once I jump in the sled, I think about being still, but I also just have the opportunity to kind of quiet my mind, to kind of breathe with the track. You know what you should be feeling. You know how long a corner feels. You know the different pressures. And so you're crossing your fingers. Uh, you kind of hold your breath in different places. You're hoping it's a, actually a game of trust in the back because once you're in, you don't really have any control on the way down. Music for me is just this opportunity to get to express, to just lay my soul out on the keys. If I was to try and describe the best race ever of my life or the best race imaginable, it would be in terms of art versus mechanics. It would be a feeling, not a function. The reality is, is we're people, we're not machines. So it's not just about that physical performance so much in terms of emotional, mental, spiritual that goes into that performance. So Melissa, you, you train for four years, you get to the Olympic level, you're representing Canada on the world stage, and it, it didn't turn out the way you thought it would. The Olympics was probably a mix mash of every single human emotion you could think of in two weeks. We got to Korea and I at that point in time still didn't know who I was actually going to be racing with. And uh, for most of the four years, I was competing in the top sled. But two days before the opening ceremonies, I was told that we decided we're not doing a push off for the top position. I'm going to be racing with Canada three instead of Canada one. And it was really hard to balance that reality, the reality of I'm at the Olympics and I get to compete and this is a childhood dream. But also that reality of like, Wow, I came here and I was training for a medal. And I was training to be the Olympic champion. I had gotten silver at world championships for back-to-back -back years leading up to the games. This was, you know, the time. There was times where I was mad at God, for sure. Uh, it was that kind of feeling where it's like, okay, God, you led me here um, to this very last, I guess, point. And at the very end, you kind of pulled the rug out from beneath my feet felt like a carrot kind of being dangled in front of my face. If you're sovereign and you're in control, like, why? Why did you do this? I call it my prayer journal. So coming to God and just being like, okay, God, like, uh, I'm freaking out, or this is where my heart's at, and just like the struggle and the triumph of it. I've painted a lot of mountains throughout here, and it's just like, I guess, significant of the journey. I had a mentor that encouraged me uh, to just plant some scripture in my heart. Psalm 27, and um, it's just this psalm of where David's like, yeah, like Saul's attacking me, I might die, like I'm on the run for my life, but then he writes his absolutely beautiful words, like even if I'm attacked, I'm gonna remain confident. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. It is something bigger than Olympic medal, it's something bigger than anything I can do on ice. And it ends with these beautiful words, just wait patiently for the Lord, be brave and courageous. Yes, wait patiently for the Lord. If God essentially gave you a to-do list and then you got to run off, do it, and then come back and say, hey, it's done, is that actually a relationship? But instead, as sons and daughters of God, he invites us to get to go on that journey with him. Even in this season of like, okay, restructuring and making new goals and Figuring out like, okay, do I want to go for another full Olympic cycle? Do I want to throw my heart back into that? And God's like, I, you don't always get to know what I'm doing, but it's that conscious choice of, okay, well, I trust God here. Well, I choose to praise him even when I have no idea what's going on. Well, I choose to proclaim that he's good when his blessings not pouring out in my life. It's this really beautiful, journey of like God asking us to be fully invested and wholly surrendered and it's the most beautiful hard thing in the world and even now like I thought the story would go a different way but God's not finished yet he has more of my story to write and he has a bigger story 